Yes, there's really five of these Sharknado movies now. Yes, I am still watching these movies. Yes, I am still reviewing these movies. And yes, Adam Haskell is once again my guest star when it comes to these movies. Now that I've answered all of your questions, time to review the fifth Sharknado movie. Buddy, this is 22 Tiger Dude here. Welcome to Chuck It Tech's Halloween Extravagant Reviews. As I am going to be reviewing Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. So, Sharknado 5 Global Swarming once again stars Ian Ziering, Tara Reed, and Cassandra Skirbo. So, Sharknado 5 Global Swarming is about when a global Sharknado is coming. It just keeps growing stronger and stronger and it's spreading all over the world. And when Finn and April's son actually gets stuck in the Sharknado, it's up to them to transport all over the world to save their son and to stop this global Sharknado in general. So before I review Sharknado 5, Adam Haskell is going to be giving his review for the film. So Adam, take it away buddy. Thank you so much trying to tie your dude for having me on your channel to review. Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. So last year, I saw Sharknado 4, and for someone that really just can't really stand this franchise, I thought that film was actually really funny and a lot of fun. I don't know, maybe watching it with a friend helped it or something, like helped the experience. But I was laughing a lot with that one. It was like my favorite one. It's it's just, it was just so crazy. It's the craziest Sharknado film we've gotten. I just had a blast with it. It's a definition of just guilty pleasure. It's so bad, but it's just amazing. And this year we have the fifth one, Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. And unfortunately, this is an instantly forgettable installment in the Sharknado series. I wouldn't say I hated it like some of them, but yeah, this is really really wasn't all that entertaining for me, honestly. It's just kind of really just sort of boring for the most part. I wasn't hating myself, though. It was just, like, really boring for the most part, and I don't know. This one just didn't do it for me. It just, I think it just, it wasn't too guilty pleasure for the most part, honestly. It just, for a lot of it, I felt like it was taking itself a little too seriously for a Sharknado movie, and it really wasn't that funny for the most part. Now, there's definitely some hilarious scenes in here, I'm not gonna lie. There are some scenes, but it's not consistent like Sharknado 4. This movie, this franchise has proved that it can be crazy and stuff, and I was definitely wasn't expecting this to be crazier than Sharknado 4, but it still could have had a lot of crazy stuff in it. Like, it still could have been a crazy, stupid, fun movie, and unfortunately, it just wasn't. The acting here, it's a Sharknado movie, it's obviously really bad. I mean, the acting in all these movies is bad. This one's very much the same. The acting's bad. The dialogue is terrible. Uh, the effects are obviously atrocious. Um, I didn't hate myself with it, but it's a really forgettable one, honestly. I, it's just, for the most part, not that fun, and it, it could have been a lot crazier than it was. And it just, Sharknado 4 proved you could just make it a really stupid, fun, guilty pleasure thing, and... This was just kind of bland for the most part. I just wasn't a big fan. I think it could have been a lot more, and uh, there could have been a lot more fun stuff in here. Just for the most part, was took itself a little too seriously. I'm going to give this a 2 out of 5 or a C-. minus. It's just nothing. I, I already pretty much forgot about this. Anyway, 22 Tiger Dude, uh, thank you. Now, back to you, man. Thank you so much, Adam, for reviewing Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. Now, if you guys have been keeping up with my reviews for these movies for the past few years, you know that for the most part, this has been a guilty pleasure franchise for me. I really have been a fan of at least most of these movies. They're just so bad that it's good. The first Sharknado, although yes, it can be just a little bit boring in moments, 
for the majority of that film, I found it to be a guilty pleasure. I never knew I was ever going to experience a world like that. But when I experienced the first Sharknado, it was a hell of a ride. And the same thing goes for Sharknado 2, which I would say I think is slightly better than the first. Like I said, with the first, it has its little bit boring moments, but I do think uh, overall there's so many guilty moments with that film that it easily outweighs some of the most that I found to be a little bit boring. And then we have Sharknail 3, oh hell no, which is a film that I liked for the first half, but then the second half got really really boring and even the Sharknado stuff with the second half of that film I just felt tired and then Sharknado 4 came along and I have to say there's not a single dull moment with Sharknado 4 I actually think that's the best in the franchise and when it comes to Sharknado 5 global swarming unfortunately it's more like Oh hell no. Granted, I will say oh hell no is just slightly more weaker, but I have to say unfortunately this is the second weakest Sharknado movie and considering how self-aware the fourth installment was, I was really really hoping the fifth one would be the same way. Now, am I saying there's none of that guilty stuff with this film? No, of course not. There are some moments where they're self-aware and those are the moments where I did find myself enjoying Sharknado 5. Unfortunately, there's not enough of them, but when they are self-aware and when you do get your Sharknado moments, they are actually pretty cool. I still found myself having a ton of fun with the Sharknado moments. And this movie opens with an Indiana Jones sequence, which is actually different for a Sharknado movie. Normally when these, when these movies open, you get a big already a big Sharknado sequence. Surprisingly, this movie didn't open with that. You probably don't get your first Sharknado sequence until I think the first like maybe 10 minutes, somewhere around there. That's when you get your first Sharknado sequence. But it has this Indiana Jones uh, sequence with um, Finn and Nova, who is once again back in this franchise. And it is pretty cool to see Nova again. But it did have this Indiana Jones opening sequence that I found be a lot of fun and they were t and they were totally self-aware that they were ripping off Indiana Jones even the Sharknado 5 title and speaking of Finn Ian Ziering continues to be the best actor when it comes to this franchise. This guy knows that this is not your Oscar worthy franchise. He just comes on set and you could tell he has a lot of fun. You could tell he fully embraces it. This guy is seriously awesome. He's definitely the most aware of what he's in out of everyone in this cast and he still really brings it. He still has such great charisma. Tara Reid I'm gonna sound like a broken record saying this. She is still awful in this franchise. She ha has not been improving. Uh, yeah, she's still awful. Still not impressed with Tara Reid at all. I'm sure she's self-aware of what she's in and all that, but her acting, the way she delivers her lines, it is still pretty awful. And as I said, Nova is back. Nova played by Cassandra Skirbo. Uh, she's really good here. I did really enjoy her. It was really cool because I, I haven't seen her since Oh Hell No and they did tease her return at the ending of The Fourth Awakens. So it was cool to see her again and I, I enjoyed her character and I think just like with um, Ian Ziering, she really does embrace the goofiness of this film at least when the film is meant to be goofy and without spoiling anything how this film ends and sets up for Sharknail 6 was awesome I think that was honestly the best ending to a Sharknail franchise and despite how I felt about this installment it does make me excited for Sharknado 6. Now for Sharknado 5, it's similar to Oh Hell No, except while I do think this is boring, I don't think it's as boring as Oh Hell No, it's just by slight however, cause yeah, this movie when it takes itself too seriously, and I mean too, too seriously, 
this gets really boring. And by the time we get to the third act of Sharknado 5, it's like the filmmakers forgot how to make a ridiculous movie. Because this movie started off with so much potential, and they were doing a good job. And then it's like, as the film keeps going and going, they really aren't as self-aware. And the Sharknado moments, really, they're very sporadic. Like, you still get your Sharknado moments, but when you do get them, they last for like a good 30 seconds, and we just focus so much on um, Finn and April and them trying to save their son and all of the stuff that surrounds the story. I really don't care about, like, when they're just sitting there and talking. Like, we don't need so much exposition for a Sharknado movie, but there's actually so much exposition in this film, it's not even funny. And it actually got really annoying. The point of this is just to be ridiculous, not to sit down and have so much exposition for a storyline that's not meant to be taken too seriously. I felt like different writers came in and wrote this film because obviously the self-awareness definitely wasn't here like it was in the fourth film. And then by the time we get to the third act of this film, wow, does the ridiculousness just completely, and I do mean completely, go away. It really does disappear. It's not once we get to that amazing ending where the ridiculousness comes back because it's just such a downer. Like, am I supposed to feel depressed watching a Sharknado movie? I did have a problem with the writing, uh, just not being self-aware. Not that I was hating the movie. I wasn't sitting there angry, but I was just sitting there so bummed. Ow, and I don't think a Sharknado movie should really do that to you. And even the direction, I did find to be quite choppy because we do see Finn and April transporting all over the world. They go to this destination, to this destination, to this destination, and the movie just comes off as being jumbled. And not self-aware jumbled, it's just legitimately jumbled. Overall, Sharknado 5 Global Swarming, I think, is a huge disappointment. Just like with Sharknado 3 All oh, Hell No, I thought maybe after Sharknado 4, this franchise would be fully ridiculous. And while this does have its ridiculous moments, and moments where I did find myself laughing, there wasn't really enough of that. As the movie keeps going and going, it's like the filmmakers forgot what a ridiculous movie is. And there's just so much exposition in this film that I really don't care about. I really do hope the sixth film improves over this because how they ended this film truly was awesome. This this should have been a guilty pleasure movie and it just isn't. It's just mediocre. I'm gonna give Sharknail 5 Global Swarming 2 out of 4 stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. What's your favorite installment in this franchise in general? And I want to thank Adam Haskell for reviewing Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. He has been reviewing all of these movies with me since the second Sharknado, and it's been really fun continuing this tradition with him. If you guys want to check out his channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have... Tiger power!